The role of a VR surgeon in diabetic vitrectomy is to dive into the vitreous and using the various tools at his disposal, remove the fibrovascular membranes strangling the retina and free them. Vitrectomy has evolved in the past 50 years from very large incisions with the Kastner's open sky approach to a more controlled operative environment with a close pass planar technique. This evolution has sped up in the recent years with the progression of 3 port vitrectomy from 20 gauge to 23, 25 and 27 gauge instrumentation in relatively rapid succession. The primary goals of DRD repair is to remove all tractions without creating a regmatogenous break. After removal of the anthroposite traction, we then focus on the tangential or circumferential traction. This can be accomplished by segmentation, delamination, end block delamination and bimanual dissection. We are demonstrating these techniques through this video, highlighting the multifunctionality of the vitrectomy probe. Segmentation involves the vertical cutting of epiretinal membranes into smaller segments and this can be accomplished either with vertically cutting scissors or a mechanized vitreous cutter. This pictorial representation demonstrates segmentation using vertically cutting scissors. Same technique is shown in a patient where vertical cutting scissors is used to segment fibrovascular membrane. Segmentation is easier with 23 and 25 gauge cutters as the cutter in the smaller gauge instruments is closer to the tip than it is with the 20 gauge. With 25 and 27 gauge instrumentation, segmentation can frequently be achieved using the cutter alone. This is a video showing segmentation of membrane where adequate cleavage plane is available to introduce the vitrectomy probe. This video demonstrates segmentation using vitrectomy probe where the probe tip is introduced between fibrovascular membrane and retina and breaking the fibrovascular membrane into smaller fragments. When segmenting membranes, it is not necessary to remove the membranes completely, thus leaving small circumscribed remnants centered on the neovascular pegs. This video demonstrates the diathermy to the bleeding edges and trimming of the remnants after segmentation. In certain cases, when there is no plane available for dissection between fibrovascular membrane and retina, PIC can be used to find a cleavage plane for the vertical scissors or vitrectomy probe. Here in this video, finding a dissection plane was difficult with a probe. A PIC was used to find a cleavage plane between fibrovascular membrane and retina. Once the plane for dissection is defined, vitrectomy probe is introduced to segment the fibrovascular membrane. Illuminated picks are also available, which gives the advantage of better visibility and bimanual surgery. In end block delamination, the posterior hyaluride is kept partially intact in order to use the continuing anthroposterior traction to elevate the epiretinal membranes during dissection. A small window in the partially detached posterior hyaluride is made so that a horizontally cutting scissors can be introduced into the retrohyaluride space. This enables us to completely remove all the fibrovascular tissue from the retinal surface. The risk of postoperative bleeding may be reduced by a complete removal of fibrovascular tissue from the retina using horizontally cutting scissors to cut the individual neovascular pegs from the retinal surface. The aim is to cut rather than abyss the neovascular pegs as this would lead to a perioperative hemorrhage from the side wall of a retinal vessel. These videos shows the technique of delamination of fibrovascular membrane from underlying retina using 
horizontally cutting scissors. In cases of difficult delamination or segmentation, especially in mobile retina, it may be useful to consider bimanual surgery. This requires either a lighted instrument or a chandelier system. Both techniques have pros and cons. The chandelier system emits a diffuse illumination, but the lighting may be inadequate for detailed work. A lighted pick gives good local illumination, but gives a limited field of view. A bimanual surgery, where a forceps is used to elevate the fibrovascular membrane and a probe is used to delaminate it. This highlights the multifunctionality of the cutter. Fibrovascular membrane can be peeled off the retina using membrane peeling forceps or using vitrector by modulating the suction. Membrane peeling from the posterior pole is difficult in pedia due to tight attachment to the retina and risk of bleed. This video demonstrates the use of forceps to peel off the membrane from the posterior pole. Vitrectomy probe is used to remove the membrane using the suction. Common complications encountered intraoperatively are retinal tears, retinal detachment and hemorrhages. You can see a hemorrhage developing at the posterior pole while peeling this membrane. Similarly, a tear has formed at the peripheral retina while attempting the membrane dissection. PFCL can be useful while handling mobile retina. It helps to keep the blood of the macula region, stabilize the retina during membrane dissection and also aids to drain the subretinal blood through peripheral breaks. PFCL is used in this case to stabilize the posterior pole while performing membrane dissection along the arcades. Surgery for pedia remains challenging but has advanced due to improved surgical instrumentation. Careful preoperative and operative planning including the choice of instruments, gauge and tamponade is the key for successful surgery.